One, two, three. Hear them low, hear them high. And watch out, eagles fly. Fly, eagles fly. On the road to victory. E A G L E S, eagles. <laughs> yeah! We're going back to the Super Bowl, and we are the NFC East, I mean, the NFC East champs and the NFC Conference champs. And just to see this team, see the listen and let they talk. See AJ Brown up there, who just got here last April, and then to see Jason Kelsey, Lane Johnson, Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, who've done this before, but get to do it again at such an older age is really special. Yeah, I mean, you really, you really can't take it for granted. You really do have to enjoy it. Uh, soak it all in because these are the moments that when your career is over with that you're going to be thinking about. You know, I still think about those conference championship games. Unfortunately, we lost more of those than we won. But the one that we finally won in 2004 against Atlanta, I can remember looking in the face of Jim Johnson, a guy who rarely showed any type of vulnerability. The streets of Philadelphia is Jim on Johnson fire right now. They're showing some footage here of the team, of the, of the, of the, of the um, fan base in Philly. they all out in the streets right now. Oh, my God. That's all I can say. I wish I was a part of that. Um, it really is special. It, it really is special. So hope these guys realize just how special it is. And this is a group of players that will walk together forever if, if they take care of business in two weeks. But even being a conference champion is something that ties you together. I know it does with me and my brothers that played here uh, during the time that I was here. And I will say, like, when you guys did cl climb that mountain in 2004, you did win that final game. I was one of these people. <laughs> <laughs> I was one of these people out here. Uh, and you know that this city is going to be uh, on fire. You know, there's just there's so much excitement here tonight. Uh, all around the city, you know that everybody, uh, it's going to be a big party in, in South Philadelphia, Northeast Philadelphia, uh, all across the surrounding suburbs. Eagles everywhere. Uh, I know that people are uh, celebrating all across the country, all across the world, just like we're seeing here in uh, downtown in Center City. Yeah, these are some aerial shots of fans flooding the streets in Philly to start. The celebrations wow. uh, through the playoffs. We heard it's a Philly thing. Well, this right here is a Philly it thing. It's definitely this is a what Philly, Philly thing. That you can believe in, baby. You know these fans Fan are going to go bust through or yes. uh, downtown to just really get the party started. But it's going to be a party here the next two weeks leading yeah. up to the Super Bowl for sure. Yeah, and 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 this is um, this is what it's all about. I mean, this is this is what it's all about. These fans are the ones. Players come and go. Coaches come and go. Yes. I've always said this. This team belongs to this city. This team belongs to the people that have been here for decades upon decades through all the tough times, uh, the good times, the bad times. You know, they always are here, and they're always here to support this team. And this is the, these are the moments of why they do it. These are the moments like tonight is why they take flack from other sports fan bases when they and defend the sports teams that are here because, you know what, when it comes to supporting their, their teams here, it's not just the Eagles. I know the Eagles are the number one team in this city, but they do this with all of their sports teams mm -hmm. here. There's not a fan base. There's not a fan base in this country that's like the Philadelphia fan base. There's nothing like it. I've been other places. You root for other teams. This, this These sports teams in this town, particularly the Eagles, it means so much to this fan base. It truly is their lifeline. It's, it's in their blood. When they talk about they bleed green, it's not just something that they're saying. They truly do. And doing the job that I do on the radio, I talk to them every day. And sometimes that frustration and passion can be misconstrued for anger and being uh, uh, bad fans. But no, it's because they care. It's because they care and they want to have moments like tonight. And it's so deserving for the number one sports fan base in the world. I can't. I wish I could go down. I'm a little too old to be down there. Guys. <laughs> I mean, look, we, we'll wrap up in a little bit. We can, we can, we can jump in a car. Say the party is still going on. It's still going on.
No, it's just uh, it's so much fun, and obviously, look, the, you know that the, the team is going to be having a blast too. I'm sure we'll, we'll see plenty of shots and plenty of tweets uh, here over the next few minutes uh, to a couple hours of the players inside the locker room celebrating and getting ready for uh, what obviously is going to be a huge matchup here in a couple weeks. That game has got to be kicking off at this point now, right? The, the Cincinnati Bengals and Kansas City Chiefs. So we'll see now who the Eagles will play, but for now, uh, it's a party uh, here in Philadelphia. You said it's in their blood. Eagles fandom is generational fandom. I was telling Fran earlier today I, I talked to my dad this morning and uh last week for the divisional round he made pulled pork sandwiches on sunday so today uh he had the crock pot out fresh uh fresh pork ready to go because he said we won last week so now i gotta make uh pulled pork sandwiches today i guess in two weeks he's gotta fire up the crock pot okay. again <laughs> all right if it's been working this whole season you gotta stick with the it. way that the eagles are playing yep. i mean yeah keep that pulled pork coming yeah. <laughs> That'll be the big question we've got for you as we're yeah. leading into that yeah. game on Sunday. Uh, we got the long rolls, the provolone. Yes. We got it all. We got it all. <laughs> it's it's good stuff. But but like you said too, Eagles fans or Philly fans do this for any team. When yeah. when the Phillies were going to the World Series, Jordan Mailata was out there yes. partying. We saw photos and yep. videos of him hitting the streets. It just means more here. It's a it's a sports in the city is such a unifying thing for people who live here. And the athletes come here. Not knowing what to expect. In a few minutes, I'm gonna give I'm gonna let y'all know the stats of this game after I get through seeing a certain part of the video. So hold on just a few seconds, a few minutes, I mean. Phillies players were there. Um and each team they all go out and support one another, especially when you're talking about postseason runs. So uh yeah, this I I just I think about the the camaraderie and the brotherhood yep, yep, of yep. the city coming together to support one another. Um, and I'm thinking about that Phillies run to the World Series and how everyone was so in on the Phillies. I remember the Eagles players being over at the game, Jason Kelsey being over at the game. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not surprised. And uh, this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. We got two weeks of this. We got a, a, a few uh, a few tweets here rolling through. We saw Bryson Stott from the uh, from the Phillies chiming in. So yeah, to your point, like uh, players, from, uh, it's cross sports in terms yeah. of the love that we see. And you got the Phillies legend, uh, our Philly legends here, and Don Staley. Um, it's just great to be able to see uh, the outpouring of love for this team. Which I mean, like these guys have been dominant from week one all the way up through week twenty one. Just it has been the best team in the NFL. It only seems right that they are going to the Super Bowl. They're representing the NFC. Yeah, I, <laughs> you know. I can't imagine, I know this is a little bit off topic, but I can't imagine the conference championship game being played at a neutral site. Yeah. No. I, yeah. I, I just can't imagine that. And, and, and these fans of a home city not being able to enjoy and experience this, something that their team would have worked for all season long to have the number one seed. I just I just hope it doesn't go down that yeah. road where they want to be at a neutral side. A lot of players were asked about that this week. How do you feel about it? And they said, well, this is why every game matters because yes. we're fighting for this home field advantage. It kind of removes the... Of course, every game means something, but it removes that motivation yep, to yeah. want to win every game because this is why it's so important. Like, look at this. You saw the atmosphere the past two weeks. This is why you go 14-3. and three. This is why it makes that run so much more worth it. They've been out there for 14 hours. They got here at 4 a.m. It's yeah. almost 7 o'clock. <laughs> I guarantee you, those players will tell you, especially those defensive guys, because those are the guys who really feed off the energy mm -hmm. during the game. When that game was nip and tuck early in the game, and Hassan's out there doing his thing, and they're getting after the 49ers, that crowd had to be at a fever pitch. And that's what you want. That's the advantage you have. Because Fans, it's the most important of the game. Everybody knows that. South for sure. you on the road or at a neutral site, but being at home and still having the energy of the crowd behind you and pushing you, man, that's why you want the home field advantage because it gives you that edge. It's supposed to give you that edge in the championship game. That's why you're trying to go 14-3 and because you want this game at home. Yeah, I think Chris Long, right, uh, sent, sent out a tweet during the game where uh, just kind of posted his Apple Watch kind of got after him. was like, hey, look, <laughs> yeah, it's that. a little too loud where you're at right now. Uh, the fans certainly going to hear it. Yeah. Uh, letting them know, listen, Chris, uh, duck for cover. Uh, to take it easy right now. I don't know if your body can handle this. You can uh, just temporary hearing loss. <laughs> like, what? And he's up high. He's not even down on the field level. So just getting a sense of uh, the vibes going on across the street, which is awesome to be able yeah. to see. Yeah, I wonder. Watch, is that an Apple Watch that he has? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, I wonder how uh, Debo thinks the uh, atmosphere was compared to yeah. Levi's. I don't know if you saw like earlier in the week. Yeah, yes. You thought Levi's uh, was a little bit was a little bit better of an atmosphere. I wonder what he thinks after tonight. Yeah, that's the yeah, a, a West Coast uh, fan base. Nah, no disrespect to the 49ers, but it's just different in the Northeast. 
uh, and, and not just with us. You think about New York, you think about Boston up there in New England, like the, the fan bases in these Northeast cities. It just, it's, it's almost like it just means more to them. So like you mentioned, Fran, I don't know, in San Francisco, are they going to be out there at 4 a.m. in the morning waiting on the, uh, the gates to open at 8? Not only here, not only were they out. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get y'all some stats right quick because like, I don't want to go too far into the video. Um, this, was so, this was by far one of the most, I'm not going to say one of the most complete games the Eagles have played this far in the season, but if you really look at, at it um, statistic-wise, um, Hurts didn't have many passing yards thrown. He did throw for 121 yards passing um, on 15 and 25 um, completes and attempts. Um, 4.8 yard average. Um, he had a, a, a quarterback rate of 72.2, which is, which is still not bad because it's still above 60, um, percent average. Um, rushing. The Eagles did real well rushing, but we didn't have a hundred yard, we did not have a hundred, hundred yard rushing back, but, but, but all the, each of these running backs, um, have had, including, including Boston Scott, they, they all had more than 20 plus yards rushing and they all add to 100 yards rushing so um Kenneth Mishu he had me I can't miss I'm sorry Kenneth Gainwell had the most yards rushing he had 14 carries for 48 yards um Miles Hurts had 11 carries for 42 yards um Hurts had 11 for 39 and Boston Scott had 6 for 21 and Mishu had 2 for negative 2 and lower negative 1 going back so um touchdowns though Hertz um had a touchdown rushing. Um Madison had two touchdown rushing and Boston Scott had one. So that's your four scores. That's your four scores. That's um 12, 12. That's what, what is it? Um 12 that's 24 points right there. Um but if but if you count the field goal case including the extra including the three pointer, all that's your 31 points scored right there in general. Um receiving Devon Devonta Smith. Had two receptions for 36 yards. Um, 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 AJ Brown four for 28. Gatesworth two for 26. Um, uh, Goddard had five for 23. Stahl, I mean, Jack Stahl had one for five, and Santos had one for three. You know what I'm saying? And um, defense. Like I said, the Duke wasn't the most complete game the Eagles have played this year. Like I said, because everything is statistically low. Because um, Jaden Hurts, the only one had had more than a hundred yard, had hundred hundred yards uh, uh, um, passing. But everybody else is way under the amount, and why it wasn't the most complete um, game they played this year. But they did enough to win the game, and we can't blame the injuries on the four nine because of the four nines. You know, once you get injured, you get injured. It is what it is. Uh, which I'll get in that later into in the video. Um, Kazir White, um, six tackles, two, um, two assists. CJ Garner had five, uh, um, tackles, three assists. Blankenship had one, uh, um, four tackles, three assists. And he had one, um, uh, one tackle for loss. Um, Avante Matt, three tackles, one assist. CJ Edward had three tackles. Hasim Reddick had a big day. Um, three tackles, one assist. Two sacks and one fourth fumble. I'm sorry. Brankenship had the fourth fumble and um and Redder had the fourth fumble. Um Josh Sweat had three tackles, three uh, 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 uh um I mean, three tackles, one assist. Slay three three for three. Uh Brad Berry had three tackles. Marcus Epps had three tackles. Now Marcus Epps tackled the one he's supposed to have tackled um uh, uh um what what the what the running back name? Uh, uh, I forget. I can't, I can't think of his name. But anyway, if he, had he made that tackle on that running back, that would have been a negative, negative three yards. But instead, it wound up going back. Um, that boy had ran sprinted forty some yards up the field for the score, and that was the only score they scored. But overall, that missed tackle um, could have been a detriment to the Eagles team, but it wasn't. So we're not gonna go that far. Um, uh, 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 Davis. Had two tackles, one assist. Um, Hargrove had one, two tackles, one assist, one sack. Um, Milton Williams, two tackles, one assist. Adama Kinsu had two tackles, one assist. Graham, one tackle. Zach McPherson, one and one. Um, Fletcher Cox, one and one. 
Uh, John Ponder, Ponder um, Johnson, number 48, had one tackle. And Robert Quinn had one tackle. You know, but overall, the sacks go to Hargrove. Um, the sack goes, the, the two sacks go to Hasim Reddick. Called those are your three sacks in that game alone. And the kick return, Boston Cup had one kick return for 29 yards. Um, Jake Elliott with one for one, four for four. Uh, and Kern with, with four, he kicked, he kicked the fourth field goal, but he almost, but he, but he had, but now that one, now that, now that the last, the, um, the last kick that he kicked, um, in, in that game, uh, one of the 49 uh, 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 um, uh, special team was ran to him, and that what gave us to get back on the field, and we and we scored one of those uh, one one of the touchdowns off that off that penalty, and so um, overall, that's your statistics. The Eagles won the football game thirty one to seven. I I didn't really expect it to be a lopsided win. Cause I expect the fall down to to give a little bit more competition. It would have been had Brock Purdy played a, played a complete a whole complete game. I think the Eagles probably would have won the football game, but it it, it would have been it probably have been a little bit close than that. It probably would have been like 20, 28, 24, somewhere longer than that. It, it would have been a little bit more of a competitive game than what it was. So when Brock Purdy got hurt, the Eagles I mean the, the fall down had issues at quarterback. Um, they sacked Brock Purdy once in the game, and that sack would cause him into his elbow, and the other three sacks came off the other quarterback that they put in his place. So that what so so, so that's how that went. Like I said, the four down gave us they gave us some hell in, in the first half, in the first half, the first quarter of the game, but then the Eagles um were twenty one and seven going into halftime, and they scored the other two touchdowns in the um. In, in the second half, they scored one. I think, I think they scored one in the third quarter, one in the fourth quarter, and that would end the game 31 7. So, um, overall, this was a nice game. We are we are in, we are back in the Super Bowl for the first time in five years. The last coach to get to the Super Bowl with um, with Doug Peterson, who who's our last Super Bowl winning coach. So, if um, Nick Sergano win his first Super Bowl, it'll be Eagles' second, it'll be his first Super Bowl. And so I'm not sure who we're gonna play because um, who we're gonna play because the Bengals and Kansas City game come on after after it said the game come on at six o'clock and probably on now. So I'm gonna get a look at that game at some point um once I'm done with this video. But overall this was a great this was a great, great game. So and then the more the footage right quick. Then to the then to the footage. That's strictly for this area, man. Especially today when they know they're about to do something so special. That's when you see those connections mm. and those relationships really come to fruition. Yeah, and, and the way that he takes care of them throughout the week, um, the players love him for that. And the fact that he treats them like, you know, this is their team. In other words, it's not a dictatorship. It's like, okay, you guys take ownership of this football team. And he trusts his leaders. He's got great leadership on his team. That allows a coach to sort of step back a little bit and not like to manage everything on the team. And I think that allows his players to be themselves. They enjoy being able to show their personality when need be. But you can tell when it's time to crack down and get to business, they know how to do that as well. You know, we talked about this from like a, a football standpoint, an X and O standpoint, that, you know, what is, what is it that uh, Nick Sirianni, Jonathan Gannon, when they go up and speak to the media, that they say is most important to them, the things they have prioritized, you know, creating explosive plays, you know, they're creating pressure on the quarterback, things like that. Those are where, that, those are categories where the Eagles were at or near the top of the league in across the board here this season. You say, all right, well, that they set a goal and they went out and achieved that goal and it led to team success. So kudos, you check all the boxes there. But then you get into some of those those five connect those five uh, pillars for Nick Sirianni in terms of building a team and you know the connectivity and all the different aspects of the way he wanted to build an organization. The Eagles have achieved that as well. So on and off the field for the co for the head coach and the entire coaching staff organization and say, hey, you know what? This is these are our goals. This is what is going to lead us to success. And to check those boxes off the field and then to check them on the field. I can't believe Nick Sirianni is not a finalist for Coach of the Year. Just with what this he and this staff has done here in 2022, obviously the team's going to the Super Bowl, and that is most important. But to me, that is best, the most exemplary of why this coaching staff. That's the thing too. The Eagles.
niggas are being oh, the niggas are being overlooked and being snubbed for, on all these year. awards yeah. that going on. Too, so that motivation in its own self when you don't win no award. We all, we all, we, we all know what's more important than any award in the NFL, and that's getting a Super Bowl, another Super Bowl, and getting a ring on our fingers. That's more important than any accolade in the NFL. Yeah, boy, that's what I believe. I think, I think the Eagle fan base believe this as well. Harder back. Oh, just because I mean not harder, but harder back. They don't want to go with him. Yeah, we've been passing out flowers to all these guys, and deservingly so, having given Howie Roseman his flowers. Yeah, no doubt. Mm -hmm. He put this team together in the offseason. He added pieces right before training camp. James Bradbury traded for C.J. Gardner-Johnson while they were in training camp, added a couple vets throughout the year to help on that defensive line, to add depth to that defensive line, and we know what he did this offseason by bringing in A.J. Brown. Howie Roseman deserves a lot of credit for putting the team together for the second time, a Super Bowl um, appearance team for the second time, and he did it in the second year. I know it's Jalen's technically his third year, but it's his second year as a starter, mm -hmm. the same way how he did back in 2017 when Carson was in his second year as a starter, able to, to surround his young quarterback with a lot of talent to put a strong team together. Howie Roseman deserves a lot of credit for the players that we see out there on the field. By the way, that offseason uh, and the, all the players that Howie Roseman and the organization brought in, that's a gift that keeps on giving because you have the number 10 pick in this upcoming draft still coming over from last offseason as well. By the way, subscribe to the Journey of the Draft podcast wherever <laughs> podcasts can be found if you want to learn more about who the Eagles could take with that 10th pick after a Super Bowl run here in a couple weeks. Uh, well, if you tune into the post game show every week, we appreciate you, all the viewers. But I know you all tune in to hear Ike yell victory. So we put something together for him. Let's check it out. Oh my God. <laughs> victory! <laughs> oh my God. He's done victory. Damn. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video right quick. Um, you guys out there, give me a thumbs up, comment, like, share, subscribe. I don't want to go any further because oh, Nick said you're on finna speak. He gonna speak for a little while, and I don't want to put to go further than what I already have. So anyway, uh, comment, like, share, subscribe like I already said in a minute, few seconds ago. Give me a thumbs up and most important notification bell on top. I make a video come direct from me to your for your enjoying pleasure, and you guys enjoyed it two weeks because we are now the NFC NFC East champs, and we are the NFC Conference champs, baby, and we're going to the Super Bowl. E A G L E S Eagles. Uh, 14, Peace 18, or and enjoy your um, great, great Sunday. I'm definitely going to enjoy mine, so, uh, and that's the truth.